How's it going all? Hope you're safe, hope you're well. Welcome to rule number two of the Rules of Thinking by Richard Templar. Okay. Here we go. Rule number two. Wait, actually, before we go into that, my takeaway and moral of the story from rule number one yesterday was um, avoid yes men. So it's all right to find like-minded individuals for whatever area you're uh, focusing energy in. Do you get what I mean? So if you're trying to build a business, it's all right to get around business-minded people to pick their brains. Do you get what I mean? However, you don't want to fall into the trap of having yes-men surrounding you. Does that make sense? You don't want to fall into the trap of hanging around with people who are just going to agree with you about everything and laugh at every single joke you drop, even if it's not funny. Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't want yes-men. Because when you're actually messing up, they won't have the bollocks to let you know. And you'll mess up bad because of that, yeah? You don't want yes-men around you, okay? So make friends based on who they are, on their integrity, how strong a person they are, yeah, in themselves. Does that make sense? Yeah? Don't worry about what they believe because beliefs shift all the time. Every single day, people learn new things, you know? They have new experiences. They come across new circumstances. So avoid echo chambers. That's what I understood from that. If you had a different interpretation or you've got any questions or something, shout out in the comments, okay? We can talk about it. So rule number two is don't be scared, okay? Let's see. It can be frightening to start thinking for yourself. Who knows where it could lead? You could end up with any number of principles and beliefs that don't sit comfortably with the people you spend your time with. You could find yourself out on a limb. You could have to face up to realising you've been wrong about things, or at least not been right about them. One of the barriers to being an independent thinker is the fear of being different. Don't be scared of being different, okay? Don't be scared of being different. It's your difference that makes you you, yeah? Don't be scared of being you. Look, that's understandable. Of course it is. But you can take things gently. There are no thought police out there. Not yet anyway. <laughs> no one else has to know what you're thinking until you're ready to let on. That's true. You don't have to sit your whole family down and say, I need you all to know that I think your way of life is wrong and I entirely reject it. <laughs> Thinking for yourself doesn't entail sharing your new beliefs until you want to, okay? If you start to cultivate friends with different backgrounds and beliefs, this all gets much easier. Just one of the upsides of doing it. Once you step out of the echo chamber, having independent thoughts is much more readily accepted and you'll have the fun of meeting people who agree with your new thoughts and people who don't. Both equally interesting and enjoyable. You have to accept other people's differences too, of course, and not feel threatened by them. Listen to them and then make up your own mind. I agree with that 100%. Like, I love meeting new people. I love coming across new circumstances, situations, environments. I just love new experiences. I love living life, right? And I love a good debate. I love learning about life. And I love a good debate. And that... A lot of my uh, people who I regularly debate with, we don't agree on everything. We don't agree on everything at all. And it, it, it's fun, though. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'll carry on. If you're used to agreeing with everyone around you, of course it can be quite daunting to say that you don't share their views. So wait until you're ready before you say it and then be prepared for them to feel threatened by you. How you handle this is up to you, but you'll be much happier about your choice if you've thought it through in advance. I'd add that if you respect their view, they are more likely to respect yours, and that's as it should be. I've observed, unsurprisingly, 
that people who respect others' views, even when they don't share them, are more popular than those who can't accept difference. I can respect different views in it. Even if I don't agree with it, if I can understand the perspective, I can, okay, I can respect, I can get it. Yeah. Yes, then. Okay. When you think for yourself, it's not only about ideas and values and politics and religion. You need to think for yourself at work and in practical matters too. If you're working alongside other people, it can be scary the first time you say, I think there's a better way to do things. But give it a go. Keep it practical, respectful and non-critical. And you should find you get a positive response. Yeah, like if, you're, if you're trying to share ideas for improvement, that's something that could be done better. Like, I think if you come from an angle of, excuse me, criticising first, like, mate, the way you're doing it is shit. Do it this way instead. Like, people's barriers are naturally going to go up. People are naturally going to get a little bit defensive. Do you know what I mean? They're going to feel attacked. So don't go the critical route, yeah? Go the curiosity route. I wonder if we do it this way, could it, could it actually work better? Let's try it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah? There's ways to do things. If you've done your thinking carefully, you're probably right. And people will appreciate that. If they persuade you that your ideas aren't as good as you think, don't take it personally. But keep thinking for yourself and analyse their comments. Maybe they're right. So... Hone your thinking skills for next time. But don't be put off. All independent thinkers need a bit of courage. Look at Galileo or Darwin. But it only takes your colleagues to say, that's a great idea for you to feel inspired to voice your thoughts again next time. So the moral of the story. If you respect their view, they're more likely to respect yours. Okay? That was rule number two. Don't be scared. I've got to back that one up. A hundred percent. I've got to back that one up. I think Richard's hit it on the nail. Uh, hit the nail on the head right there. With rule number two. And I think that's a very empowering rule. Yeah. I like it. Share your thoughts below. Thank you. I'll catch you tomorrow for the rule number three. Bye-bye.